Welcome to my lecture online. Here's an interesting question from the JE main test. It deals with current and charge. And let's take a look and see what the question asks. A current through a wire depends on time as I equals alpha T plus beta T squared, where alpha is 20 amps per second and beta is 8 amps per second squared. You can see how the units need to match the equation because every term should have the units of, of amps. And it asks us to find the charge that crossed through a section of the wire in 15 seconds, and they give us four possible answers. So right away, the concept here that we have to think of is the relationship between charge and current. And we know by definition that the current I is equal to dQ dt. Oop, uh, dQ, what am I doing here? Let me erase that. Here we go, dQ dt. And notice that if we then uh, want to find charge, we can say that dQ is equal to I times dt. And then if we integrate both sides, we can say that Q, the total charge, is the integral of I times dt. So that's the concept we have to deal with. In order to find the total charge, we need to know the current. We multiply times dt and we integrate it from the initial to the final time. They give us a 15 second interval. So that's how we want to approach that. So once you realize that, and you look at the equation, you plug in the numbers, and you realize that I is equal to 20t plus 8t squared. And we don't need two units. We can just leave it like that. And then if we use the same concept as we do here, we could then say that q is equal to the integral of I times dt, or q is equal to the integral of 20t plus 8t squared times dt from 0 to 15 seconds. And that's how we find the total charge. So let's go ahead and do the integral. So this is equal to 20t squared over 2 plus 8t cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 15 seconds. And of course, this cancels out. That becomes 10t squared. So plugging in the upper limit, we get 10 times 15 squared plus 8 times 15 cubed over 3. And of course, we don't have to plug in the lower limit because that gives us 0. So when we start working this out, here we have 15 squared, that's uh, 225 times 10, that's 2,250 plus... Now, if we wait just a moment, let's see what we have so far. Up until now, with the first term, we end up with 2,250. Of course, these are coulombs because we're looking for charge Q. And if you look at the answers, we realize that this already exceeds the first two answers. So we know that A and B cannot be possible. Then if we look at the third answer, and I already have the number equal to that without even calculating the value of the second term, which we know now will cause it to be greater than 2,250 coulombs. So this is not possible. So we can then conclude that it has to be D. Now, just to make sure that we have it correct, let's work out the result for D. So now we have uh, 15 cubed times 8 over 3. So 15 cubed is equal to 225 times 15. So times 10 and then times 5 and add those together, that gives us 3,375. Then we multiply times 8 over 3. So now we take 8 over 3 times 3,375. Let's see if this is 10, that's 18. This is divisible by 3. So we can write this as 8 times, 3 goes into here, 1, 1, 3 goes into 75, 25. And 8 times that, that's 8,800, 900, that's 9,000. So this is equal to... 9,000. So when we add that to 2250, we get 11,200. Oh, 11,000. Let me change that here. 11,250, which sure enough ends up being answer D. So that's not a very good looking 11,000 here. Let me try that again. 11,250. All right. So you can see that just to make sure you got it correct, you evaluate the second term but already realizing that this term added up to the second height answer and it then only has one answer left that could be the possible correct answer. And if you're confident enough that you did it correctly, you can stop right here, get the answer, move on to the next problem, and you probably saved yourself a few seconds because you only get three minutes per problem on this test. And that 
is how it's done.